I'm Alex Mack, part of the Call to Action crew, and I'm here with some fancy, gorgeous lady, Rachel. What's up, boo? Hi, sweet pea. How are you? I'm doing amazing. How are you? Oh, you know, living with entertainment. It's fun. My birthday is tomorrow, so. Uh, yes. Yeah. Happy birthday. Oh, my gosh. Everyone, there's all this talk about the Flairton house. But let's kind of make it a thing where everyone needs to shout out and remi remind us that, you know, it's more importantly, Rachel's birthday tomorrow. So, you know, just saying. Just saying. Yeah. yeah well, you're coming in off uh, pretty hot after your, after winning your match against uh, Mr. Not so well known Harloff, Christian Harloff. So, yeah. I'm excited for you to come judge this a little bit. I'm excited. I actually uh, requested to do this. This is like an early birthday present for me. So I'm real happy. I'm friends with both these competitors. Uh, I've mm -hmm. known them since the day they came into the into the league. So I think that this is going to be a really great uh, match tonight. Not kidding. They're both not only wonderful people and characters and everything, but they're both really big parts of uh, Schmodown. They have such a really great friendship and uh combination of characters being part of Shmoda. I'm excited to see how they're going to butt heads. I, I think they're going to come out like holding hands throughout this, anything, right? <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, yeah. I think they fight like best, that only, like the way that only best friends can. Like yeah. they can actually <laughs> throw punches, like pull off their <laughs> lip and they'll be like, you want to go get a beer? Cool. And have everything be fine. Like that's what I feel like is going to happen tonight. Yeah, I feel like uh, if we don't see a little bit of blood at some point, it'll probably be a letdown. Let's be honest. Yeah, I'm, yeah, guys, <laughs> let's do this. Thunderdome. All right. Um, if you haven't watched Mobeats before, thank you so much for dropping by and welcome to come check us out. Please like and subscribe to this channel. We'd really appreciate uh, you checking out the Call to Action uh, crew for sure. But Schmobates is a Schmodown themed debate show where we try to argue Schmobates as uh, their Schmodown's biggest questions. We already have all the questions and everything good to go. Everything was posted on Twitter and Facebook and all these wonderful places. But as the audience, you are going to determine who's going to walk away with bracking rights. Who's going to be the winner and the loser? We'll find out. All right. So starting off with our first competitor, you might know him as a champion. You might know him as a uh, current god of IG, but we just know him as a smasher. <laughs> smash, smash, god of IG. I don't know about that, but thank you very much. It's great I mean, to be here. Isn't the line, you know, when somebody calls you a god, say yes? Yes, well, of course. Come on, Kevin. I thought, Listen, I thought I, I, I've, had a hell, I've had a hell of a week here. You know, I've I faced the, uh, it's been recorded and you'll see, I've faced the the goats, uh, Dan Merle and Roca and an upcoming goat, Alex Damon. I've faced the boat, Brad Gilmore. So now I'm facing, in a war of words, basically, the biggest mouth there is in the league, and that's my manager, Kaiser. So he knows I never say no to a challenge, and I am so looking forward to taking all of the aggression of all of these movies, Catwoman and Jonah Hex and RIPD and Men in Black 2, and I'm gonna shove it in his face with some great arguments. He's going down and he's going down bad. That's all I gotta Wait, say I about that. And I have to say- a movie of all time. Uh, you know, oh. some of it. And wow. the wow. Fountain House! <laughs> <laughs> I, this I love that. that. I don't even understand it entirely, but I love it. I'm not allowed in that sure. Chipotle anymore. They kicked me out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And on for our second competitor. Um, you might know him as like the new big DJ around. I mean, he I literally love his uh, music um, playlist and everything he puts together. So cool. Um, but also he's like, it's, it's Kaiser. It's the dungeon. It's the man himself. What's you know, there was a time in this league, Smets, when you used to shut your mouth and let me do the talking for you. You might have to apply that philosophy today. Hello, Alex. Thank you for having me. Hello, Rachel. Hi, baby. What's up? Well, are you? I mean, I know technically neither one of you guys have actually officially argued on camera. Formally. <laughs> I think we argue a lot at Universal I'm Studios. Kind of we argue that, on okay? camera. We argue in the bank line. We argue <laughs> at uh, Vaughn's when we're buying crinkle cut fries. Me and this kid, you know. Never ending argument. This is just another day. It's just so. a matter of two guys <laughs> always being right all the time. And so <laughs> naturally there's some fireworks. <laughs> Well, I'm excited to see who is actually right all the time and who is right most of the time, but loses sometimes. 
There so you go. We'll see how that kind of works out. What do you got in that cup there, Kaiser? It better be, uh, it better premium, be a good beer. Premium Ecuadorian coffee. All you need <laughs> is love. I just wanted to just put that out there, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm just drinking. I, actually, I've been drinking coffee since 6 a.m. this morning. So I built a shed in the backyard. <laughs> mm -hmm. I built Piggy Smalls, a new obstacle course to keep mm -hmm. him busy during the pandemic. So, you know, we're. I'm on my. I got Zavirkin Plus Ale, so I'm good with mine. What are you drinking? What are you drinking? Evian Light Beer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I I don't want to delay the arguments anymore. I mean, I know people that that's what they're here for at the end of the day. Let's you know be honest. I okay. one thing. You yeah. Forgot, so you forgot, to, you forgot to introduce my manager. Oh, I have a manager. You're totally right. What? You know what? I, oh my I, God! <laughs> Look what we have here. You know, I've been training Kaiser all week to smash the smasher. You know, oh, as an undefeated okay. open champion myself. I did take down Frankie Numbers. I believe Kevin's loser roommate, I believe that is. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, Kaiser, he's he's looking good. He's ready to go. He's beaten me in every debate that we've had behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, so uh, good luck. Uh, you better give my boy here a fair shake or I'm going to have to come back on this show and cause some damage. But uh, yeah, uh, Kaiser, if you don't have anything uh, left to add, I do have to go. I got to pick Zipper up, up at daycare. So, hey man, that's not that's not daycare and 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 work release are two different things. So he's at the <laughs> beach picking up the trash. That's fair enough. All right, thanks thanks for your help this week. Thank you. Yeah. I, right. Oh, now that I know you're part of this, I cannot wait for this first question, bro. So what kind so of managing know, was involved in this first question? <laughs> let me just tell you something. <laughs> what is oh, you screwed, hitman. When you need a manager <laughs> on short notice. <laughs> the hitman for hire you can't you can't beat. He came in there and, and let me tell you something. He may not have gone to Harvard, but he dated a lot of Harvard law professors and I trust him. So I got a lot of training this week and I feel good about my chances today. Thank you, Hitman. Now well, beat it. We now, we have him. one competitor like manager, now? the other one doesn't. But you know, we'll good. see. We'll see how this goes. You know, it's it's all good. We have two amazing competitors here. Let's go and drop to it. So again, if you haven't uh, watched a Schmobade uh, episode before, let me just kind of break it down to you. So we actually start with an opening statement to a <clears throat> one minute apiece, uh, followed by four minutes of open debates. And lastly, a closing statement with one minute apiece for each of our competitors. Now for a third and final question, I'm going to be using this beautiful little action coin. You only get it if you are part of the very exclusive club of uh, Action Army Generals to get this coin. So definitely, if, you, uh, if you're if you really into that, the Action Army and all that good stuff, there you can actually check out. There's a link in the description box. So go do that. But that will determine who is going to be starting with a third and final question. Okay. Yes. Let's just draw, go ahead and drop to it. Okay, Kevin, so you're going to be doing this? our opening. You're starting with your opening statement for the first question. And Rachel, my lovely. Please do the honors. Sure. Question one, what is the best slogan or catchphrase a Schmodown per, uh, personality has? Am I going? I, grammar is awful, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to work it out. <laughs> that was not bad. All right. All right, starting right now. Let me stop you right there. First of all, this uh, question, should be moot. Um, I thought I was going to get in a spirited discussion about what is the best catchphrase, but of course, even needing a manager like Hitman, Kaiser doesn't know what the term catchphrase is because his selection, which is one of the greatest all time quotes in the Objection. league, he can't bring is, up. You can't my, interrupt. He can't, he can't interrupt. bring up the name of my answer. Objection. Oh, okay. oh, 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 that's it. That, that's it. That's all him. That's all him. We're going to pause uh, his opening statement, but you cannot interrupt during his opening statement during the open debate. Itself. I watched a lot of Matlock. I object. <laughs> Thankfully, oh. this is not Matlock. Let me resume. Kaiser, you didn't read the question. The question is, what is the best catchphrase? Let me give you a catchphrase. Rest in peace. You can't see me. What you gonna do, brother? 
Those are catchphrases. My friend, you said one of the greatest quotes, and I won't say it because you don't want me to say it. It's one of the greatest quotes in league history, but it's a quote. When's the last time Dagnino said it on a show? When's he said it in a match, in an interview? That's not a catchphrase. That's not a slogan, man. If you need to see, if you need to understand, the Oxford Dictionary of Slogan is a short and striking memorable quote used over and over for the purposes of advertisements. A catchphrase is a word or expression used repeatedly or conveniently to represent or characterize a person. Mine, let me stop you right there, was the number one catchphrase in all of season five, where the season was built around Mike Kalinowski and Anarchy and the IG tournament. I yield the rest of my time. Okay. All right. Fantastic. I apologize for my really awful grammar. I'm just going to edit that. Okay. I was like, <laughs> um, I was like what is the best uh, slogan slash by? Used by. Yeah. Used by a. I did not go to school for English. Words are hard. So rough. Okay. I got a case of Pepto Bismol. I'm going to send you two or three bottles. <laughs> Thank you. I need some more Xantex too. After I that. hijacked a Rite Aid truck this morning. I got you to Pepto Bismol. I got you to soft tissue for, you know, I got everything. <laughs> the man has it all. But Nosco let's see gonna if out. he's going to find. The answers. Let's see what his answer is for this one. Okay. I after editing it, go ahead. And you have one minute starting now. It's my turn. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. You know, before my arrival, well, to be fair, our arrival, Mr. Schmetz, into the movie trivia schmodown, there was only one show in town. And his name was Bob Finstock. Okay. Now he's the greatest manager of all time in this league. You know this. Now, we should not hold it against him that he's been wearing the same pair of tube socks since 1996, especially now that it's a pandemic. He needs to change his socks. But to Gucci's credit, he once won a case, the trial of JTE. We all know it, right? Was JTE guilty or not of cheating? Now, in my heart of hearts, JTE was probably guilty because he's from Massachusetts and people like him and Roxy and Snyder, those people have no class or no scruples. So he was probably guilty. But what's impressive to me is Gucci got Same him off time. with one simple line. And with oh, one sorry, time man. line. No, time. No, no, you're I'm not. You're 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 not. The uh, open debate itself. Okay, so we have two. I'm not going to lie. We have two very iconic lines here. Rachel, what do you think of these choices? Are they shit or are they awesome picks? What are your, what are your thoughts? I think that they're both solid. Um, I would really like to hear Kaiser explain why he thinks uh, that line is a slogan or catchphrase. Um, and I want to hear Kevin tell me why he thinks that Kalinowski's is the best of all time. Yeah. They're both like really solid picks. I, I mean, like they're both, I love both of these lines, especially when associated with uh, both the competitor managers as well. Um, but, you know, Robert Parker, you know, uh, just who just played last week actually was saying, I just hate watching my dad and old brother play. What's this, 2003? <laughs> <laughs> Parker, go back and watch oh, Aquaman. What Wait, do you was Parker alive? I don't want to break up the family. <laughs> Does he have memories from 2003? I don't think he's old enough for that. <laughs> You should be studying. It was 17 years ago. Oh, I could really have one. He's totally old. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go into the open debate itself. You guys have four minutes. I'll let you know when you have two minutes remaining, followed by 30 seconds and below. All right, go ahead, starting right now. Now, Kaiser, I opened up explaining to you how you don't know what a catchphrase or a slogan is, so we don't need to revisit that. But it's like when they asked you what's your favorite fruit and you said carrots. Yeah, sure, we can eat carrots, so it's food, but you're absolutely answering the wrong thing. It is one of the greatest quotes of all time. It's one of my favorites. It's on the classic moments on the Facebook page, but that is not a slogan. Now, why, let me stop you right there, is the best catchphrase. It is the equivalent of The Rock saying, it doesn't matter what your name is. Anybody could be saying anything in any promo, in any pre-match promo, <laughs> let me stop you right there. He could say it calm. He can say it angry. Let me stop you right there. He could say it in the middle of a match. He could say it in a pro. He could say it in a post-match promo when it interrupts. It is one of the most wrestling 
type catchphrases in the movie trivia shmona. And the other ones you have that you could have picked because you didn't know what a catchphrase was, growl, growl, all the belts, all the records, where's the belt? Those are all great and those are focused on the belt. But we're talking about, let me stop you right there. He could interrupt anything and it's the heel and it was built. The whole season was built around how Kalinowski was interrupting Thad. Was uh, He thought he was pulling all the strings and creating all this drama by always stopping Thad and saying, let me stop you right there. This is what's going to happen. He founded the IG tournament by saying, let me stop you right there. I'll let you talk, buddy. Is he done? <laughs> We're now. We have yes. four minutes together. Let me tell you something about Mike Kalinowski. <laughs> if I need a new, if I need a new game show host for Deal or No Deal, I'll call Mike Kalinowski. I won't call him for catchphrases. Have some team of CBS writers writing for him because he can't write his own stuff. He he needed knapsack there to to get him through an interview. Stumble around like a caveman in a leather jacket. So I'm going to stop you right there. You, you know what we're it, you know what we're dealing with. You said a catchphrase or slogan, correct? The word was slogan? Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in trial and error. And I believe my client is on trial and it's an error. That's a slogan. If, <laughs> When's if the next Tom time he said Dagnino it? When's the next lawyer, time he ever used it? If Tom Dagnino was a lawyer, that would be his slogan. And guess what? But he's not a lawyer. Slogan. It's a winning Has he slogan. used it in the league sense? He won. He won the trial of JTE despite JTE years ago. But has he said it since? It. So it's like better call Saul. Better call Gucci. You see what I'm saying? That, okay, better call yeah. Gucci. That's a slogan. That's a catchphrase. Not your greatest quote. at what they ever did in your protect uh, in, in their minutes. profession. And you're talking about some guy who's watching Gonzo takes Manhattan right now. He can't even take him serious. Listen, you above anyone should know about the let me stop you right here because you, my friend, are the loudest, biggest trash mouth, as he would say, in the league. And that's why I love your brother. But he told you to your face, you were mid-sentence talking about how you walk around here and you're the biggest deal in the league. And what did Kalinowski say to you in that cutscene? He said, ah, let me stop you right there. And guess what? The loudest, biggest oh, mouth in the league, in Kaiser, it? shut I'm, up I'm and let Matt and let Kalinowski talk. He got the better right of you. Now. With the greatest catchphrase, the most wrestling catchphrase, if this was wrestling, could you imagine he could even add it to his theme? Let me stop you right there. And then he comes out to that. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, bro, you felt the wrath of the let me stop you right there, and it stopped you in your tracks. So now you're saying that that's not one of the greatest catchphrases of all time? You didn't even give a catchphrase. You gave a quote, and I love that quote. I love it, but it's not even a slogan, bro. Use the dictionary. You've been training me too much on all these Harry Potter movies. You need to get, put away the Harry Potter books and get a dictionary and know what a slogan and a catchphrase is, brother. The problem with you is you didn't use those Fozzie the Bear flashcards that I gave you for Christmas because you have no concept of time. Now, let me show you something. You see what this is right here? I don't know if you can see that. That's a life. That's a lifetime backstage pass to any Willie, any Willie Nelson concert ever. You know who gave that to me? Tom Dagnino. You think a guy who sells washer and dryers on Wednesdays and wins a couple matches in the IG could pull that? No. I rest my case for that. In already. time. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I have so many feelings right now. <laughs> so many feelings. In the in the words of Frank Janish, I think he put it uh, pretty uh, pretty perfect. I'm nervous. Why am I nervous? He's Absolutely. in the other room. <laughs> um, these are both incredibly, you know, well-known iconic quotes, you know, very strongly associated with, you know, uh, the personalities for sure. Um, is there, Rachel, okay, with that being said, is there like one thing that Kaiser would have to say to really guarantee your vote, if you're voting, of course? Um, like, what would he have to do to kind of put it in your paper? I would like, I mean, he would have to convince you. that Kalinowski's phrase isn't the best. Mm, okay. Yeah. Has maybe having, maybe he's had better catchphrases or maybe there's a, some, something else that's more strongly associated with him and for sure. Or, or any corruption in general. I would love to see that kind of argument. Um, yeah. I would also love to see in your closing statements in particular, is like what that a uh, statement slogan, like you said, mm -hmm. catchphrase, if you will, what it did for the personalities. Like how do people use it in their faction? Um, how do the fans like it or not like it? How did it impact like their personalities, you know, in the future for sure. Okay. 
Yeah, absolutely. A game. Yeah, we still talk about both of them for sure. Did Kaiser yeah. leave because he knows he's getting beat so badly? Come on, <laughs> Kaiser, get back here. I had to check on the pig. Thank you very much. <laughs> I oh, want to hang out with these small. You should, call, you should call Hitman and tell him that he, he coached you wrong for answering the question wrong. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you know, he, Hitman approached me, and his price was very fair. So, you know, I didn't, <laughs> think I, needed, I didn't think I needed a manager, but I was – uh I was buying broccoli and cauliflower and some other produce, you know, and I'm just, it's, it's what I'm eating these days is just produce. And uh, if you can get it. And all of a sudden he pulled up in like a black hearse. I don't know if he stole it from uh, the set of the Munsters, but usually when he rolls up on me in a black hearse, I'm running for the bushes because he's probably taking a shot at me, but he offered his services. Seemed like a fair deal. I took it. You can't deny it. He is technically undefeated. So, you know, mm. and it's one match against uh Frankie Janish. All right. So we're going to be starting with our closing statement, starting with you, Kevin, again, right. before um, moving on to our second argument. Um, you have one minute to answer our questions and solidify votes in your favor, starting right now. Look, Mike Kalinowski is my most heated rival, and it takes a lot for me to admit that he has a he has a quote. He has a catchphrase that is memorable. It could be used if it was wrestling and he said it, you know, if he said, hey, 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 and he looked at the crowd, that the whole crowd would chant it with him. And before, and so it changed his career. It changed the season, got built around him. They had the Anarchy tournament. He had the IG tournament. And let the let this speak for itself. Here's our buddy Kaiser. Oh, big KO. You know what? There was a time when you were a big KO. Wait, there, let me stop you right there. Okay, let me stop you right there. I have video evidence. Right I rest there. my case. Thank you very much. Mic drop. All right. You're yielding the rest of your 20 seconds. No biggie. All right. Let's be clear. All right. First of, all, first of all, video is not admissible in a court of <laughs> schmobates. So I want that strike from the record. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. We'll see what we can do. We can submit it for further investigation. Let me well, stop you right you, there. Kaiser. It's the nickel. Am I? Do I still have time left? You well, have we're going to with you to make your argument starting right now. Everybody knows Mike Kalinowski is a dicky do. I rest my case. <laughs> that's it. All right. All right. Okay. That's I think it. That's the fastest closing statement we've ever had. Ten seconds. Wow, that's impressive. Not gonna lie. Okay, so <laughs> that was a well. You guys finished up your first argument. How are you feeling? Feeling pretty good. I, I don't are, hate you any more than I hated you this morning, Kaiser. So are, are you anywhere at all? Hold on, I just got to gauge. Where, where am I on the hate meter? Out of one to ten, where am I on the hate? Right meter? now, you know, right sometimes, now. At, sometimes at work you're at like a six or a seven. Uh -huh. You're at a you're at a solid four right now. We're good. So I'm under the radar. You're under the radar. Yeah. I'm gonna have is, to turn up the heat then and get that heat meter you're going. You're gonna have to. Yeah. If you, you gotta call. Because yeah. You gotta start. That's getting, the only way I'm gonna fry your ass. <laughs> turn up the heat. <laughs> well, I uh, as uh, let's not make it any warmer than it already is. I'm in St. Louis and it's like really warm outside and I do not me. like it. Jeez. I want it to be chilly and rainy and cold and windy. That's what I want. I appreciate it. You should have picked Dickie Doo with our Robert Parker, who's in the chat. You should have picked that one, Kaiser. I would have voted for you. <laughs> Parker was my number two. Well, actually really Parker, no, here is the truth is, when Parker called the entire league a bunch of Dickie Doos, that's my number it's two. But see, then again, it's still a quote until he does it again. But yeah. We'll talk okay, about well, what a catchphrase is one day. Why don't you let her finish the sh sh show, Smats? You're always butting and interrupting. You don't know. You don't, even you do it with Jen Sturger. You don't let nobody interview you. <laughs> Adam just reaffirms that 22 minutes in and we got our first dicky do. Okay, so uh, starting, okay, that was just our first argument. You heard it here. Now, if you have your opinions, uh, if you already made your opinions and you're like, hey, I want this person to win this argument or this person, whatever it may be because of these reasons, go over and make your uh, vote and your opinions known over on Twitter. Check us out on the Call to Action podcast Um Twitter feed where we actually had the polls and everything ready to go. Now, again, you we don't want you to vote just because you're like, Kaiser's my favorite manager ever, or because I feel like I have an intense loyalty to Smets. We want you to vote exclusively based on these arguments. So keep that in mind. All right. So thank you so much, Jake, by the way, for doing this for us. And, and now thank you, Jake, on. and thank the YMCA in Wilmingham, Virginia, for letting you go over there and broadcast live today. <laughs> what? I, I don't know. He uses yeah. the internet over there. That's fair. And the weight room. Wait well, room when you're there. 
I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna be moving on to our second question. Where we're gonna be starting with uh, we're gonna be starting with Kaiser for his opening statements. You do have one minute to make your closing, not closing statement, your opening statement. And I'll be whipping up the second question. Rachel, please do the honors. Got it. Question two: What is the category or a slice that my, should be added to? I'm so sorry. I'm so off. So I didn't bad. even hear the question because I didn't know what language that was. In. What category or slice? Let me. <laughs> what, what, what do you drink? What do you drink? Someone who had an English tutor at one point in their life, please reread the question. There you go. I want to have. I have, okay. have what she's having. Right. What is a category or slice that should be added to the Inner Geekdom League? Mm -hmm. Now yeah. I'm super excited. This one as a, as a manager, but also as a competitor, someone that trains his competitors and someone that actually actively competes. So very two different approaches. All right. Starting with you, Kaiser, please make your opening statement and starting right now, you have one minute. Now for you people out there who maybe actually saw a movie outside of Hobbs and Shaw or whatever you're watching book smart. I don't know. There's something called Universal Classic Monsters. Universal Classic Monster Movies. These are movies that were made from like the 20s to the 50s, and it's every monster movie you've ever seen in your life based on everything you know. We're talking Dracula. We're talking Frankenstein. We're talking the werewolf of London, whatever his name was. The Invisible Man, the Swamp Thing creature of, from the Black Lagoon. You see what I'm saying? These movies are the fundamentals of everything sci-fi, fantasy. They even merged comedy. You see Abbott and Costello versus Frankenstein. What I'm saying is these movies shaped every Marvel movie, every uh, Jack and his robot movie. I don't know. John. John and time. John, that can right. your I'll pick it up next statement. I'll, I'll pick it up on the next round. All right, yes. I to hear it. All right, so great pick. You chose the Universal Monsters. Uh, awesome pick. I can't wait to see that argument. And over to you, Kevin. What was that's your a, pick? That's a great pick, Kaiser. I don't hate that pick. Obviously, I'm glad we both didn't say video game movies because no one wants to watch those. Um, the great. the choice that I have, uh, I break it down into why would we add a slice in IG? Now, I have certainly enjoyed the fruits of my labor, and it's all been studying. And we're getting at a point with the IG where whoever coughs first. Whoever misses one question, whether it's a don't tell Peter type situation or whether it's just a question. Like you can't interrupt me on my here. speech. Guy, talk. Hi, Stop either. talking. Gosh, Go learn the rules. Don't you watch the show? Have you, you never mute him? Seen you can mute him. I'm going to start my Kaiser, I will mute you if needed. Okay. This should dog votes for him. Uh, let me let me backtrack here because I've lost tr my train of thought. So basically, if we were breaking it down, the IG right now is uh, who coughs first. Uh, you could literally go multiple choice in the second round and it go perfect the rest of the game. But if the other guy or girl doesn't miss, you still can't catch up. So if we're fundamentally changing the IG, while the Universal Monster Slice is a great idea, my pitch to you is the fantasy sci-fi slice from singles. What that allows you to do is for the IG, you still – Come on, man. Let, let me talk. Give me credit for Christ's oh, sake. I will mute you. you. What it gives you, the IG is, is a chance to have some of the matches be, behave a little more like the singles matches where someone can be down in the second round and still, you know, you have a shot at coming back. Listen, me versus Chandru, whoever coughs first, whoever goes multiple choice first, that could be the end of the game and we go perfect the rest of the game. So. And time. That concludes the opening statements with these. Okay. These are two like really great picks for IG. Absolutely. I agree. IG division, league, tomato, tomato. It's all good. Okay. So what do you think, Rachel? What do you think about these picks? I think they're both really solid. Um, I love both of them. I grew up watching the Universal Classic mm -hmm. Monster. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, I still love having Tom Bellamy Frankenstein every Halloween. But um, I want to hear um I want to hear Kevin tell me why fantasy sci-fi as a slice should be added when that's basically mixed bag, in my opinion. Okay. My uh, mm -hmm. um, I know that they delve deep into like, you know, certain slices um, and the universal monsters. Um, I want to know, I want to give me an example of a question for that. I think that that would be a great 
uh, a great argument or just like an, an example. I hope July. I don't have to answer it. I haven't yeah. studied. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so let's go ahead and dive into it. You guys have four minutes for during the open debate section and uh, starting right now. Let me just real quick, because I didn't get a chance to clarify what my fantasy sci-fi movies would entail. Both of us can speak? Yes, yes. but yeah. let me just get my point out, because I never got All to right, really go finish. Keep talking. I'm going to leave for so, a second. To explain, <laughs> to explain Mixed Bag, he's not even listening. To explain Mixed Bag, uh, in Mixed Bag and IG, it's literally a mixed bag from anything that's IG quality, like that's in the IG. So it could still be Marvel, Harry Potter, but it's usually like fringe movies, like... Uh, 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 Men in Black, stuff like that that aren't like main things. My, fantasy mm -hmm. sci-fi for me will cover the ultimate geek franchises. You get Aliens, Terminator, Predator, Matrix, Blade Runner. Hell, you can go comedies with Princess Bride. You got Robocop, Robocop Avatar. Mm -hmm. You have this yeah. whole new world and universe that you could ask questions for. And as far as the audiences go, it can questions are going to get deeper and deeper in IG, and it's going to literally be who misses first. So instead of a back and forth where I miss a couple in the first round, and then let's say a future opponent, Parker, misses a couple in the second round, and then it goes to the third round, right now it's literally going to be me and Parker not missing until 15 questions into OT when he misses, and then I retain the title one day. Love you, Parker. <laughs> you just took the entire the entire open debate. You take all the time. You notice that? Instead I took one of, minute. Instead I took of, one minute. Instead of caffeinated coffee, try Sanka. Uh -huh. Try something that maybe doesn't have caffeine in it. And you wouldn't talk so so much, so loud. I can't even get a word in. Rachel asked me a question. She said, give me a question. Okay, you want a question? You ready for this? Yes. Yeah. In 1931, who starred in Universal's Dracula? A any star as Dracula. Bella Lugosi. All right, God bless. There you go. There See, you go. There's a one pointer. Look, that's great. And Kaiser, I love the idea of adding that. But if you were trying to fundamentally change the IG, adding Universal monsters, while it would add an additional 23, 25 movies to the slate, maybe 30 but movies. That's awesome movies. You're, movies people. They're want great to watch. movies, but movies it doesn't solve. If you know consider IG a problem you where you know want it to be more accessible to people, film. it doesn't solve the problem of. I love. Hey, let's open these matches up. Right. Let's get it here because instead of what you could have to is audiences by itself. It either needs to take your advice or my advice because yeah, both either, would be great. Addition. I would be fine. I would be that fine. Said, if they keep I'm it a the way it is. Pup, so I go with the old school. Yeah. And what I'm doing is for the good of the, the company and the good you know of you want to watch it to everybody. Everybody loves aliens. Morning. Everybody loves Terminator, Predator, Dune. Like there's so many that you could Terminator. open up to Willow. Or, who doesn't want to answer a question about Mad Martigan? Come on. You're right. right? Terminator should be in the IG. You're not yeah. wrong. So uh, here's my, my, and even the video game movies and the monster movies that you said, you said in your opening statement that the monster movies are fantasy sci-fi. So my, mo my fantasy sci-fi throws game. all of your movies Movie. into the IG too. So it satisfies both. It opens it wide open and you never know who, like these, these IG matches will start behaving a little more like the singles matches where there's give and take and someone's taking a four or five point lead and then someone surges Sounds from like behind in the second round the instead IG of these right. matches, which by the way, I love because I'm the champion. Believe me, I love it. But the, the, the pressure of you keep going and you keep going. And then if you even go multiple choice, that's it. So your monster movies, while it's a great idea, wouldn't necessarily solve if we were, if we thought it was a problem, a solve the problem idea, getting these matches idea, open and up IG for the specific division. So it answers yeah. two things. You get Ooh. a new specific and you, that you have to watch and know every freaking nuance. It's the perfect addition. It's an addition, yes, but if you were the reason of adding any slices or anything would be because people feel, oh, we want to get the IG open to more audiences. We want to make it more available to people and that they can play along. Right now, people can't play along answering a deep question about I Frankenstein. That's just the case. When you start answering Robocop, there is there is no time to you. I don't feel like I need to say comic book cinema without these monster movies. That's they great. Are, They'll be in my slice of fantasy sci-fi. They're, they're wrapped up into it. So I'll satisfy you I and we'll satisfy the fans. Broader. It's a broader thing, you know, and IG's all about being specific. I agree. Yeah, but maybe, I but maybe IG over, doesn't I, need to be as specific okay. and they can start adding it. People want Bond in it. People want Fast and Furious in it. I'm saying one slice, open and it up time. a little bit. I gave you guys a few extra seconds because I uh, was jotting down notes and I lost track. That was my bad. All right. Okay, so... If I was a competitor, I'd be psyched to study either of these categories. Okay, so two very different ideas on how to approach them. Um, I know Kaiser, you really kind of uh, really focus on you know it's a very it's a specific category with a finite amount of movies, uh, like you said, you know with uh, you know with Dracula, Frankenstein, all that good stuff. Absolutely, you know right. uh, definitely a perfect 
addition to, you know, IG, but also fantasy sci-fi. That's right in the wheelhouse of, you know, what it means to be, you know, an IG for sure. Um, but also the idea of adding a lot of these major franchises. I mean, Pirates mm -hmm. of the Caribbean, yeah. uh, the Alien, Terminator franchises. I mean, you can't argue. And yes. This was Sandy Koufax's <laughs> World Series ring and Bella Lugosi's uh, niece, Janice, <laughs> gave it to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big fan of this culture of movies. I, I, by golly, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> and I know people. <laughs> I don't know anyone. I should bolt. I got to know, if you were a competitor, which one of these categories would you be more excited to, to study? Are you asking? Oh, you. Sorry. Me. You I would say me. Um, <laughs> honestly, uh, I love the Universal Classic Monsters. I would prefer that in uh, singles and teams over fantasy sci-fi, um, just because it is like, a, while it is a specific category, it does have like a very broad number of movies that are included in that. Even um, the and Costello ones, Rach, those movies were freaking hysterical. You're not allowed to clock. You're not allowed to clock. <laughs> You're selling yourself. You're not they on the really clock. Oh, I'm not? No. I'm always on the clocks, Mets. I'm always on your <laughs> clock. I work for you um, 28 hours a day. And I do think that Get the fantasy sci-fi would be good for inner geekdom. Um, I just don't know if it's too broad of a category. Um, oh, that, um, it might include, like, you could be potentially doubling the number of movies that are included in IG then. And that, really? I know, while that's great, um, that's the whole reason why Christian took the IG slices out of, out of singles and teams. Right. So, well, that so for now, he there. didn't want to. We all know right. he's on record well, not wanting yeah. to. Well, oh, no, I know, but yeah. he did because that's what happened. Um, so if you guys want to argue against those, I would love to hear that argument. Absolutely. Um, you know, Frank Another is kind of uh, putting okay. in here, though. shouldn't touch your face, but if you've got a World Series ring, <laughs> touch your face. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would, like, I would whip that around at all times if I could. Um, you know, Frank is kind of mentioning we definitely respect a lot. Like he's like the go-to guy on having all these really great opinions and ideas around, uh, you know, all the different leagues. I like the aspect of randomness of fantasy sci-fi. I can provide um, any another specific slice like IG, like monsters, really doesn't change much. Just another slice for people to memorize. Same as well, he's on the take, so you know. <laughs> Oh, okay. and also, also another point, um, if you add sci-fi and fantasy, uh, you're going to kill the writers. I think it would make it their job easier because there'd be way more questions. They're running out. They're looking. They're having to go. Well, anyways, I'll, let's stop. I'll okay, talk. we're going to save that for the closing yeah. statements. Okay, so yeah. again, we're going to be starting with Kaiser. We're going to be starting with your closing statement. You have one minute. You can use uh, only 10 seconds or you can use a whole minute. Totally up to you. But you have one minute starting right now. Smets, to your point, the Terminator dun, 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 is a good category that I absolutely think should be adopted into the IG. But before there was the Terminator, there was Frankenstein. <laughs> he was the first Terminator. And you need to celebrate film and cinema history with these films that literally wrote the book on how to make fantasy and sci-fi and horror and comedy. <laughs> American Werewolf in London, my brother. Now, that may not have been even made by the same company, but you get my point. Had there been no Bela Lugosi and the Wolfman, which was 1941, Rachel, you didn't know that. You didn't know what year the, the Wolfman was released. See, he's being rude to you, Rachel. Don't pretend. Don't pretend. But who would even think that movies would be the same without these classic films? And time. What a perfect way to wrap it up. Really put a cherry on top for sure. Okay, so over to you, Kevin. I this agree, Kaiser. And minute. that's why your universal movies would be in the fantasy sci-fi. Now, I know some people would think that it might be too broad, but it's that randomness. It's that thing that will create these matches to have a little bit more of a uh, – Instead of the, like I said, who sneezes first. Look, I love it. I love the training. I have literally every movie practically memorized right now. And maybe it's a little selfish because I want to start watching new movies. I want to be challenged in a different way, right? The thing is, the other thing that I want to speak of is it would open it up to other competitors. There are some competitors that are in the other divisions. And I'm not saying they're scared of IG. 
IG, but I think they'd be like, well, what's the point of being an IG? There's 200 movies. These guys have it practically memorized. Parker doesn't miss a match in his seconds. debut and the greatest debut of all time, beating even my debut. Who's going to want to mess with him? Who's going to want to mess with me? Open it up, gets other competitors. I could have a match against the Switchblade. I could, you know what I mean? Or, you know. Nobody beat start. your debut. Nobody I can have, ever I, beat your debut. I, I can have no, a match not, against, I can have a the machine. Either? Come on, you're interrupting me, but I love you. I love you. I appreciate the kind words. It would open it up to other people. Let's say Mark Andreco. Let's send Ben, ben, ben Bateman because they know now that I don't have that my care, me or whoever they're playing doesn't have literally every factoid memorized because now it opens it up. Yes, it makes it broader, but it's still under the same umbrella. You'd have Hunger Games in there too. That's for Brienne because that's fantasy sci fi. You'd have all in of these time. movies. That wraps it up. Oh, 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 gosh. You guys want to take some deep breaths? Uh or anything? There was a lot of talk in there. Kaiser is in the pose of his thumbnail for his inside schmodown right now. You're literally in your pose. <laughs> He's <laughs> casually posing at all times. I have a standing desk because, let's face it, I'm up 20 hours a day. I, I only sleep three and a half, maybe four hours. So I need to stand. The minute you sit, you get lazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Now, I've got, what, five more minutes on? on no, no, you're done. What are you talking about? We're, we're done for this argument. We're, oh, we're I got a few more things that one to ask you. Now, now, Universal Studios found <laughs> in 1922. <laughs> Strike this from the record. Right. Hey, let me stop you right there, Kaiser. Let me stop you right there. I thought you all wanted to learn something. My bad. If you wanted me on IG, you guys should have argued Disney. You would have instantly gotten me on your side. <laughs> Yeah, but you're like dealing with the mafia. I Nobody honestly probably would have gone in uh, in the in the sci-fi fantasy uh, franchises, like major yeah. franchises. Yeah, I thought oh. about doing like just Terminator, Aliens, and Predator, like a trio. But I was like, yeah. you know what? If you, it's still that doesn't even solve this. I'm not saying there's a problem, by the way, because I like the IG as it is. But if you really wanted to, well, I'm making an argument that's not fair anymore. But yeah, uh, mm -hmm. opening it up, changing the division a little bit, getting other competitors in. I think it, as a fan for me, it would be amazing to square off against Mark and Draco sometime because he believes that he can now have a shot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but now yeah. that's also only one category. That's only one wheel slice that like people coming into IG could be good at. And like, I think that it's one of those things that it's, it's, too broad in comparison to everything else so it's basically like a kill switch on the wheel so like yeah. well i think it would like, also be involved you know, in round one opponent's think, choice. you just but these movies now are all you it would be in round one it just ever it opens it up completely into the mm -hmm. it makes it and who knows maybe it falls flat on his face and the idea doesn't work this is just stuff that i think about when i'm watching you know uh you know <laughs> RIPD for the 10th time and knowing way too much. I'm like, I really want to watch Terminator right now. So I'm do like it for me. I mean, that's much totally much fair. Um, Take a nap. Was I worried? Before we go into our third and final question, you guys, if you made your, if you decided, hey, I want Kaiser to win. Hey, I want Kevin to win. Go make your opinions known. Go vote right down there. Do it and um, kind of determine who's going to walk away with, uh, you know, bragging rights today. But some people are quick to point out y'all are both wrong. And the answer is, you know, clearly mystery science theater movie. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, another, um, a really, another one would be uh, Godzilla should be a slice. Over that two dozen movies. That's a good call. That's a good one too. Um, that's a pretty good solid call. one. He's right. Um, yeah. and another be fun. one was the Godzilla. Martial arts. Godzilla is. We're all two dozen released in the U.S. A martial arts slice absolutely should be on. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of love for the Metallica T-shirt. We gotta say. Absolutely. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot no, of I, look, I like the way it is now, by the way. Don't get me wrong. It's fun. It's really exciting to see people like Chandru not miss or me or Parker. And it's like, who's going to miss first? It makes that first miss a huge air sucking out of the room kind of moment. But it, there's something to be said about some of these singles matches you watch and you're just excited because you're like, uh, you could be down by four or five going into the third round and you, you still have a shot because you don't know how that third round is going to go. Whereas with most IG competitors now, you're going to get your two and your three no matter what. And five for the most part, we're going to get two. So then it's a question of overtime. This That's is too much point. math yeah. and I need a bear because I have a headache. I don't want to do, I was told no math questions. Yeah, there, I, I, there are technically no math questions. And yes, thank you, Dean. Studio Ghibli for me, in my case. Anime movies. One. Anime movies can be a great one. Um, you know, time travel movies. You know, but there's a million of one different, you know, slices that we can go in the direction of. And I I had some people be, some, some people, I read some um, uh, comments in here being like, Disney's not an, should not be an IG. And I'm like, one. Disney was the, the original geekdom. I will fight you to the death. I know. It's 
like, like stair step to me on Disney. I've seen her fight. fight. She, can fight. Okay. she can fight. She can fight indeed. <laughs> Oh she my wanted God, to beat up a bunch of Hell's Angels to save my ass from shoplifting some milk duds at the movie theater. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. We well, did not steal money from a movie theater. Now, well, why did the Hell's Angels Hell's care Angel. that we stole their candy, bro? I what stole was Hell's Angels milk duds, <laughs> and then Rachel beat the crap out of them to save my ass. We were seeing Ed Astra or Ed Asner, whatever that movie's called. Yeah, it was awful. Thank God. It's, 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 uh, put that uh, Ben uh, Bateman one on the on the screen. Sure. That's important. Everybody should know that. Okay, we're going to be going to our third and final Thanks, question. Thanks, Ben. We love you, brother. Third and final question. That court of law. <laughs> and, okay, so this one, um, it's a little much, it's a little bit different from what we've done in the past. Um, it's a very limiting answer potential. <laughs> Obviously, I give them, I was like, you get to do this one or that one. Pick. Go first. All right, so our third and final one, we're going to determine who's going to be going first by using this coin. I'm actually going to take down that question. Yeah. Okay, so we've already chat before we started recording. Um, okay, so uh, we have this little coin here. It's for Action Industries. If you're a fan of, you know, the Action Army, Action Industries, Guy and Bateman, those wonderful people, you know, if you're part of the Army, you actually get this coin if you're at a certain tier. It's really cool. It's actually a nice, hefty coin. Um, but I use it to determine who's going to be going first for the third and final question. And I chose so, a champion and not a chump. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> um, on one side, it says a uh, team trader. You can read that. It's a champ. Okay, let's uh, let's calm that down, Kaiser. Let's calm that down. All right. And then there's team uh, superhero. Team All right. Let's calm that down. I will mute you. I will. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, so I believe, Kaiser, you said uh, you're going to be going in for, Damn. yeah, for Trader. Got it. For ch Team Trader. For Team Trader. And Kevin's going to be in Team Guys. So I'm going to go and flip real quickly. And it is Team Trader. You got to go first, buddy. Champions you always want, no, you, you get the choice. Team, you, want oh, you get the choice. Or defer. Beer me, Frank. Beer me. I, you I can go first. You Would can you go first. Like to, you get the choice if you want well, to go first well, or defer over. I told Smets to go first, so instill the instill the fear of God. So I'll go first. All right. So Rachel, please you. read our final question. Our final question of the night: Hollywood wants to make a movie about the Dungeon Faction. Would the Dungeon be villains or heroes? Mm. It's purposely a weird question. I just kind of wanted them to get a little more creative in their arguments. All right. Since there is a little bit of dispute of whether you guys are heels and faces, I mean, or tweeners. So let's uh, make it happen. All right. Starting with you for one minute. My first question is, I have one minute. And then in the next round, how many minutes do I have? For you That's have a one minute for the for the. I got one minute right now. I got one minute right now. How yes. much do I have in the next round? Four, Four minutes. Shared. Four minutes. And then how many minutes do I have in the final round? One watch an episode. For your Come closing. on. Well, I'm asking a question, Smets. What was the last round? One. For, the, for the closing statement, it's also one. I have one minute. Yeah, you have one by yourself, four shared, and then one by yourself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can play Uno after this online. I found a cool website. Listen, <laughs> everybody knows. Right everybody right. knows. Saving lives. Am I starting now? Can I talk? Yes, you can go. You can go. I don't know what's going on over there, Rachel. You're looking squirrely. Your time's clicking, you buddy. Post, Let's go. Postmates guy money out front or something? You got to take a walk out front? <laughs> All right. Here's the thing about heroes. Saving lives is nice. But is it cool? <laughs> I think not, Your Honor. 30 seconds. I think not, Your Honor. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue that. That hurts so much. <laughs> well, oh. don't know how to follow that one. That's a pretty good. <laughs> the good news is, I'm going to tell you all why it's better to be bad. Okay. Well, it's not my time. before the open debate, my man, my dude. We are over to Kevin. You have one yeah, minute. Stop watching Scooby Doo reruns and finish finish the show. Am I ready? Yes. Starting now. In a world where freedom was a memory, 
where crime and corruption have taken over, one man, Kaiser, has assembled a team of misfits to drink and save the world. <laughs> In the end, we are the heroes that nobody asked for, but the ones everyone will remember. There's there's myself, the muscle, Kaiser's right-hand man, Zipper, the wise-cracking tech guy, Video Drew, our real hero, the one everybody in the theater will love like Harley Quinn, Parker, the magician, our Doctor Strange, Nuff said, Adam Witt, Vinny Rancuso, and Rick Hong, all newcomers of the team, trying to earn their respect, and Brittany Young, our Captain America moral compass, and Kaiser, the fearless leader, the one like Amanda Waller who sends us out for a good cause, but deep down has ulterior motives. We are the Dungeon. No. <laughs> no, he has not come. He just walked off like Chris Rock what? finished a set in uh, in New York City at Madison Square Garden. You see him? Got up and walked away like he just was Jay Z finished a three day run at MSG. Well, he didn't have a mic to draw, but that was. <laughs> I want to put a beat to that. We should. Hey, Scott, we should call. Um, try to animate it. We should try. Oh call, God! Call, 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 animate that right now. I want it animated. I want a clean cut of that so I can listen to it over and over again. <laughs> I want I want you to do that for every faction now. I'll do, I'll do people's voice now. Just Venmo me well. five bucks. No. Okay. 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 Like the last samurai in Santa Monica. I mean, okay, so opening statement. You guys got four minutes. I don't know what I'm going to say for four minutes. I'm out, dude. <laughs> like, let's don't just worry, go. I, got, I can talk for four minutes. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Okay, well, Rachel, we just heard a movie trailer. Uh, <laughs> and we, and we just heard, you know, Kaiser, you know, break it down. Villains have more fun. Villains are cooler. What do, what do you want both of them or either one to say? I just want them to keep talking about it because both are like both opening statement. That, that was my favorite opening statement. I think of all schmo now or all schmo baits. Um, <laughs> one was incredibly well thought through. It took up the entire minute. It addressed every member of the faction. And then the other one was just the cleanest cut, simple <laughs> sniper shot one and done. Um, <laughs> I want to hear more about. I want to, first of all. I want to hear the plot of the movie. Um, and okay. secondly, um, I want to. I want, I want to know who the big bad is. I want to hear. You know why they would be really good in these roles. Why are they? Why are they already? What is happening? Why are you a villain? And Sm and and Kevin. Uh, why are you a hero? Um, you know. But also, why are Kevin? Why are you not a villain? You know, and same, you know, vice versa. It, he's a little either. villain. He's a little villain. Why are you not a hero? Four minutes starting right now. Listen, if we were a bunch of heroes, we're not Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts here. We are a team of misfits. We don't get along. Everything's going to turn topsy-turvy on this mission. We're going against a, this evil threat. And the greatest part about this story is no one trusts Kaiser. But what they don't understand is that this would be the best of both worlds. We, you think that Kaiser's a villain, but deep down, because we know this, I know him. He's my best friend. Kaiser... You have a heart of gold. You would deny it to your dying day. You have a heart of gold. And what would happen is the whole movie, the team would doubt you except for Smets. But Brittany Young would doubt you. Everyone would doubt you because they'd be like, what is he up to? It feels like that he's not up to, that, that he's not up to stuff, that, that there's something off with this guy. And the other team would slowly throughout the movie realize that Kaiser, and he has his weird methods and he has his suspect methods, but, but at the end of the day, thing, he's trying Smets, to save the world. And he word in. You forget one thing, Smets. You forget one thing. A lot of things you're saying make sense, but you got to remember, I could have gone out and got anybody as a manager. I went and got a real scumbag and Brandon the Hitman Hannah. Real scumbag. That doesn't really just solidify, you know, where my moral compass but is. But what fun is that? Do you want to just be the main villain? Do you, I guess, look, Th Thanos is a great villain. Do you want to be the villain and you want the Thanos dungeon? Is remember, it's not as Thanos to you, buddy. Is a, it's is including the dungeon. With the All of the, you think you Brandon is a great villain? The Joker. Yes, the okay, Joker. The Joker's Joker is a great villain. Joker. That's a great villain. But what's a better story? What's a better story? Is he have okay, people, one, two, with, you have people that are okay. teetering on the um, side and you, you don't know? I, we heard yeah. a little bit about Kevin. I do want to hear more specifically about. Yeah, let me hear your story. Your side of Pick story. your movie, Kaiser. I'm sorry. Is this my elevator pitch? Am I real time or am I getting backlog time? No, keep going. Go ahead. Go ahead. My point is this The Joker has won two Academy Awards. You can't name any hero that's won an Academy Award. Yes, Five, four, 
three. Are you asking me? Two, one. Batman eighty nine, Superman the movie. Hero that I, just named you two. I just named you two. I Big Hero one, six. One, two. Spider Man into the Spider Verse. I just named you seven. Like, what do you want? What do you need? I'm going in that going. movie won an Academy Award. The movie won an Academy Award for best anime. I said villain. Okay. You couldn't are you trying to win awards or are you trying to tell a good story? Like, are you trying to tell the, about the dungeon? In the end. Villains tell us your pitch. Guys. What's your story? You have no story, though. Let me hear the story. When you go watch The Dark Knight, you don't give a crap about Batman. You came to see Heath Ledger cause all kinds of havoc and steal fire, fire trucks and shit. That's why is that, that what movie, your movie is? You're stealing fire trucks for two hours? You're a movie of all time because of Heath Ledger. My story allows you to be that villain, to have that the edge, to teeter on the edge. But at the end of the day, we still save the world. Because you might not think it's cool to save lives, but I think it's cool to save lives. You can let lives die. I think I'm pro-life. Batman just left Heath Ledger hanging. Whoopie, whoopie, swinging back and forth. What a puss. Let me tell you something. Heath Ledger wins. He stayed alive at the end of the movie. So the bad guys win. That's what I'm getting at. I rest my case. So you just want to win. You don't want to tell a good story. You have not still told us a story. Your movie right now is people stealing fire trucks and you hanging off that's and not dying. That people that's need a, to see right that's now. a fantastic story. Where's my money? No, I have a story about a group. We got Zip, the tech guy. We got a magician. We got Brittany Young constantly fighting with you, just like in your story. You already practically told that story in your pre-match promos. It was great. And now you can bring that to the big screen and create this thing. And then we have to overtake the evil Bobby Finstock teaming up. You shouldn't be talking about that. We're taking. We have to take on the Legion of Doom. That's Shannon Barney. That's Bobby Pause you for a second. I do want to pause you all for a second. We've heard a little bit of plot about what kind of characters he would be. I want to hear some casting decisions. <laughs> who, would, who would play you? Who would be a director? What would the tone of the film be? What movies uh, would it be inspired by? Would it be something uh, circuit Christopher Nolan? Would it be something inspired by Guardians of the Galaxy? Um, so I kind of want uh, to hear, I'll get a little, I want a little visualization of what the movie itself would feel like. Whose turn goes? Who goes first? Let's start who with you. First? Who talks first? You talk first. I, I talk first. first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you're going to do here, you're going to go get Jack Nicholson to play me, like six months after The Shining. Like he needs a new job. He's just <laughs> worked with the greatest director on the planet in Stanley Kubrick in the greatest movie, one of the top three greatest movies of all time, The Shining. And by the way, he's a villain and he's also the protagonist. You're going to get him to play me. Now, Smets, you're going to go get Mark Hamill walking around the set of Star Wars with a potato <laughs> yeah, sack and a half, idiot. half a bathrobe, half of a potato sack. I don't know, yeah. whatever. My point is Luke Skywalker had terrible fashion sense. Makes him a moron in the end. So, you know, this is what I'm talking about. See, so, so let me talk now. So for mine, I think that... I, as far as directing goes, I'll go more on the back end. Like, I think that because Kaiser, you're, I would say we keep all of us. And I think Kaiser, because you're so damn entertaining and funny, you got to have a director like Taiko Watiti that would really kind of bring the gang together and make you evil in a way, but also in a way of bringing you up that you're the good guy and you're likable. Because at the end of the day, we are the good guys saving the earth. We're just not kissing babies and uh, giving ice cream cones out to people. Um, so I'd have Taika Waititi. And Kaiser, you're irreplaceable, bro. I would pick you over Jack Nicholson any day of the week, bro. Any day. Bro. Nicholson, like, three months off of The Shining, and he needs a job. And, like, I don't know, like, maybe Billy Wilder comes out of retirement and says, I'm going to direct the Dungeon movie. The end of the day, I think the dungeon would be a great set of heroes. It would be reluctant heroes. It would be a group of people that maybe not get along. We, you've already said it. We'd well, get along, but we are the most random collection of people right ever right brought together. And how fun would that be on a show or a movie where we're good guys trying to get along just in time so we could save the world from the evil corruption that is corruption and Bobby Finstein. Okay, 30 seconds. Directed by Taika Waititi. Corruption Wittin. is evil. They're the worst people on the planet. <laughs> okay. I, I step down, no further questions. And we got Video Drew in the movie. And you don't want to boo Video Drew. Like, Video Drew is so, like, she'd be the greatest, funnest team member on our team. Uh, going after it. The fans would love her. We'd have action figures. No one wants it. Well, some people That's want it. guys are pansies. Yeah. Taika Waititi. This summer, the dungeon. And Nobody I asked for these heroes. <laughs> I just need you to voice over my entire life. Can I make that happen? Alex trying to wrangle together Alex, the crew. $19.99 <laughs> an hour. Yes. Well, I saw in the <laughs> middle of my <laughs> first video, video, I made a joke yeah, about Venmo. And Josh S just hit me up and hit me up to be my friend on Venmo. And I'm like, You've seen uh, Press Play from Dungeon Productions. 
As soon as the shit cloud lifts, we can go back to the post office. Though there will be more press plays. We're afraid. No one need. No one needs to Venmo production. me, by the way. Josh, Josh yeah. asked this. I saw him add me on Venmo when I made Wu-Tang the Venmo plan. We got the zipper, the RZA, the Smasher. Yes, and everybody Tiger, loves us. That's why we're Twitter, here. The Druzy Drews. Here's the thing, though. On Twitter, it's <laughs> it's not going to win because they're going to read gonna the Twitter and they're going to take the statements. Oh, we haven't even done that yet. Jeez. No, no. technically no. Yeah. I think you had a little bit of extra time because yeah, uh, you guys. I mean, you guys were actually answering each other's questions and everything pretty solid. So I was like here for it. I was like, one, we're actually getting along. <laughs> a little Screw bit. Screw you, <laughs> Kaiser. And I'm here for it. So let's just go ahead and continue that. So we're gonna make it. Remember, if you have uh, a world. You guys give your closing yeah. statements uh, for your closing statements, and you know I. Man, I would really love to see both these movies. Rachel, um, specifically, I know, like, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, technically, we're not voting. We're not the voting bodies, you know, you and I. However, we are two moviegoers. What are you thinking about the visuals of these movies so far? Uh, I think it'd be really interesting to see a Billy Wilder directed uh, dungeon movie. Uh, I think you might take it incredibly literal. Um, and I'd love to see, like, the slapsticky, like Ragnarok style uh, dungeon movie as well. Um, I would love to hear who you guys would be fighting against. Okay. What's that villain looking like? You're a hill hero. You're a hero. What's that villain looking like? And alternatively, you're a villain, Kaiser. What's that hero looking like? Yeah. Who are you fighting against? Who's the hero in your story, Kaiser? Yes, Tell me about that. Me a question, which has happened. Who are you, are you fighting against? Can you repeat the question? Who will you be fighting against specifically? Yeah. Who am I yeah. fighting against? Yeah, yeah. you're a villain yeah. in your own story by Jack Nicholson. Yeah. So Other than my father. Sorry, that you was guys are um, who would I if I could fight anybody in the Schmodown? <laughs> no. I would you could <laughs> make going to Schmodown your the, the hero you're fighting against. Be like corruption number one, the rock stars two. Tell a movie about it. That's the what you're after. Facts. V3. I want to fight all the big dogs. All right. Well, let's uh, hear the argument starting right now. Who goes first, Mets or me? You. Wait, I go first? Yes. Can you see the ring? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm going to win this argument right now. Darth Vader is the greatest character in cinema history. So I automatically win the argument. You can't think of a hero better than Darth Vader. He went from the light to the dark to the light. You're a Star Wars guy, kid. You know this. So if you can find me a hero in cinema history better than Darth Vader, I'll give you this one. But that's where that's where we live. So how can you ever say, we want to be those guys, man? We want to be. Remember, he's the good guys and the bad guys. But look. 15 seconds. Jack Torrance, The Shining, is the second greatest screen hero villain tragic Shakespearean tragic character of all time villains win at the end of the day what I say saving lives is nice but is it cool in time <laughs> yeah saving lines sucks <laughs> no one wants to save lives obviously okay I would love to see that movie I'm not gonna lie I just take my money right fucking now okay over to you Kevin Look, I'm not going to answer that question because that's not the question. Again, you don't, a better hero than the person. You don't even let anybody talk. You're the worst Darth player. You're, they don't know how the rules work. We're restarting my minute starting now. The fact of the matter starting is. Now. Right now. now. Yes. Okay. Now. The fact of the matter is uh, it would be fun. Yes. No, everybody loves a good villain. Uh, well, you had Hayden Christensen, though, playing that hero. So, yeah, I can name 50 heroes. I can name Iron Man. He's a better hero than Darth Vader in the prequels. We're not going to get to that. You're getting me off track. The all fact time. is Talking my movie – allow- you don't even let me talk and follow the rules. The fact is – that my movie allows you and us and all of us to still be the villains, but still go after the prize. And they were asking a question that you ignored. Who would we face off? The Legion of Doom. I'm talking Bobby Finstock, Roxy, and Shannon Barring Corruption all form this super evil lair together, and they're taking over the world. And who better than the misfits? No one sees us coming. These are the heroes that no one asked for. No one trusts Kaiser. They think that he's up to something. And at the very end, Kaiser right. shows what he really is in his heart. True heart of hearts. You're a hero. You would save lives, even if it's not cool and so i'm going with heroes the dungeon would be the heroes that nobody asked for but everybody gets because we would save the day and we would drink and have fun doing it smets you just got yourself a free box of cracker jack (laughs) 
You're gonna, you're gonna right, get it May fifteenth. Uh, I guess we're done here. Uh, my my heart hurts. Vader is the best character. In Clone Wars, the oh, you, heard, you heard it right there, with Chris Adams in, it. in Clone Wars. Darth Vader is the greatest character. In a TV, that's a TV show. Movie though. history. He admitted it. He admitted. You, it. You're not Darth Vader, dude. We're talking about our movies. Why do you My talk thing. about other movies? Because you're deflecting. Because your argument was not sound. You didn't even have a plot. You steal. You steal fire engines and hang off the side of buildings. You didn't. We don't even know that who you're fighting against. They the asked you who you're fighting you against. And you didn't even say who you're going to fight against. But the people beer, will see it on Twitter, like clock, and they're going to vote for you because stuff. they're going to be villains or heroes, and everybody thinks the dungeons are already villains, and you're going to win the argument anyway. So it doesn't matter. But everybody knows they would see my movie directed by Taika Waititi before your movie with Jack Nicholson, although I'd still see that movie too. My movie's directed by Walter Hill, 48 <laughs> Hours, The Warriors. <laughs> All right, guys. I got to tell you. Love you, Kaiser. You're watching this. I you love you too, winner, <laughs> And you got to determine who's our winner today. Rachel, this is a very personal place. This is Rachel, a very emotional place. I sent you, Rachel. I sent you. <laughs> yep, got it. And a, a $20 what are, gift card to Ralph. What would, you, what would you choose in this whole heroes versus uh, heroes versus uh, villains debate? For I you, would have, I would have loved to have seen like a really like rock solid pitch for the for the villains. Uh, but I gotta give it to I gotta give it to Smets on the heroes. It was just a, a an embodied like movie that got sold to me. I'm seeing both because who doesn't want to do a double feature on remember, a you're talking about Jack Nicholson about three months after the shining. He's got all that weird energy. You're done. Pencils down. Oh, this is not fair. I totally Pencils get down. it. Okay, well, just to let you guys know, if you're watching this, a uh, whole bunch of you are. Thank you so much for sitting, too, for as long as you have. I we really appreciate it. Go and vote. Make your opinions known right now. And you guys have, I will be updating very regularly. I'll be updating you guys very regularly because you guys have a solid, oh, let's refresh it out a little bit. You guys got eight minutes to go vote. You have to go vote right now because if you don't, then your opinions are not going to matter because <laughs> if you're going to go and watch this in like two days, it fucking sucks if you want to go vote because it's not going to matter. You got to vote right now. <laughs> and when you're done voting, I want you to go to eBay front slash the dungeon and you can buy this 1938 Brooklyn Dodgers <laughs> World Series ring. Um, I you silent no, auction. What do I have to go back to? Gonna, what do I gotta go back to? What am I watching now? What am I next? Go. I gotta get us some money while this thing's I'm gonna, going. the lights. Are that. I mean, yeah, that's dope. You can't watch yeah, six watch. monitors at the same time if I can't keep. Yeah, I try. I watched all the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings movies at the same time. Six monitors on the top. We got this new dungeon uh, facility. It's crazy. Oh, you watch it with subtitles. Time. I watched all six movies in three hours, and I was ready to go. But also, it sounds like something hired, straight hired out of an Eli Roth movie, like <laughs> Hostel. That sounds like a, a Hostel situation. So I am not here for it. But we hired a quantum <laughs> physicist who can have these guys watching six movies at the same time. It's almost like a Johnny Mnemonic. They plug in the back of their heads, and him and Parker watch the same. Yeah, movie. What, they're gonna yeah. say. what Parker they sees and memorizes, I memorize, and the same thing. We're plugged into the same thing. So it's like this. Uh, <laughs> actually, well, that would be a great show. movie too. This isn't the Kevin Smith show. Let Alex finish her show. <laughs> this Alex isn't Kevin show. show. And let Alex finish her show. I love that. Okay. Well, just to remind you guys, you have six minutes and uh, roughly 30 seconds to still make your votes. And uh, just going to go over to, you know, the people in the chat, you know, okay, there's a lot of hatred for Cardinals, but y'all suck because my grandpa was a Cardinal and he's amazing. So, um, you know, Dave is criticizing your training uh, process. All Stop Smith movies simultaneously? Sounds horrible. Well, yeah, it does, but there's the end result right there. So. <laughs> if you're not watching six movies at the same time, you ain't the IG champion. True story, world. though. If we are yeah. talking, I have literally tried to do it once before where I had one movie on the top and another on the bottom, and I was like, I watched yeah. the first movie first, then I would have that movie still going on a re uh, – like I'd play that movie I just saw with the new movie under it, Tried it for one day, it didn't work. I was like, okay, I'm I'm, I'm getting too crazy. This is Smith's Smith, first million dollar bill after he won the champion. <laughs> yeah, with our endorsement deal. deal from Arby's. Arby's off the pole with deal from Arby's, Adidas, and <laughs> Men's Warehouse. So hey, can I get can we get the hitman in here real quick? I want to ask a hitman what the hell he oh, was no. thinking. He not he didn't correct Kaiser in his horrible first answer. 
I have a uh, phenomenal manager who is up for the challenge. I have a phenomenal manager. His name is Kaiser, buddy. Yeah, but for not for this for this for this particular Alex is going to be my new manager. For particular forum, me bringing on the hitman was a very calculated, smart, smart move. Very smart for the first I'm gonna, not going to lie to you. I reached out to Bobby Gucci. He's shooting Lil Bobby in the juice. So I couldn't oh. get him. Hannah, you were my second. You, you, could, you didn't think you can take me on with that. I don't know t-shirt. I don't know what you're doing. You don't much look like a lawyer these days. Brandon, how do you miss? How, do you know that his quote was a quote, not a catchphrase? Do you know what a catchphrase is? How do you mess that up there, Hitman? Hot man. I didn't mess anything up. I've never messed anything up a day in my life. Yeah. I apologize for the civilian clothes, but you know I couldn't pick up zippers. <laughs> Who else is back there? We got a Alex. party. Frank, thanks for the beer, by the way. Oh, that's Alex back there. What up, kid? <laughs> he walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, he always walks away. How are we looking? At, can you do uh, so, Hannah? Are we going to win this or what? Yeah, you obviously. You better. Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's see how oh. Twitter goes. Uh, speaking of which, I'm sorry to say, if you're on Twitter, I'm so sorry. I wish uh, um, there, we're trying to actually actually figure out a way to kind of go about it. Uh, we wanted to do it via up uh, on um, on Facebook, but for some reason they don't allow us on Facebook as a technically we're technically a business page, which is kind of weird. Oh, really? That's weird. Um, yeah. So they yeah. they allow group. They allow. You guys sell them Lysol? Are non -business a couple pages. cans of Lysol right about now. Anybody's got a connection. Hey, th this is not the Kaiser show. Let Alex talk. See, Let that's Alex what we call an editing circles, a callback. Let Alex finish her show, Smets. <laughs> we got quite a bit of time here. We still actually have uh, just about three minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, Kaiser's an eyeless. I'd love, I'd love Hitman to argue why he thinks the, the famous... Uh, trial of JTE quote is a catchphrase because I figured you would know what a catchphrase is. Hitman. Yeah. I, I don't fifth. think he wants to answer. <laughs> Plead the fifth. All right. Yeah, that's, that's it. He had good arguments the rest of the way, but that first I mean, one the was kid, kid is smart. I never called him an idiot. He's definitely smart. He's I love Hitman. He's sneaky. That's the part you can't sneaky. trust. Sneaky. He's sneaky. Way sneaky. I feel like when, when that's you say Harry Potter, Potter are, like, are, like, like, one last thing. When you start adding up all the greatest heroes in the history of cinema, you really only walk away with three characters. Luke Skywalker, we talked about him. He's a homer. Rooster Sully. Cogburn. I'm not done yet. It's my <laughs> time. I got 30 seconds. Sully Sullenberger, who landed that plane in the Hudson. And Jack Burton from the Pork Chop Express, Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> the three greatest screen heroes of all time. Now, who are you going to put those three up against? If you were in a, if you were in a, three, in, in a wrestling match, who are the three villains going up against them? Joker, for the sure. The Joker, Jack Torrance, and Darth Vader. And Vader comes in and he kills them all. Vader has an asthma like, problem, man. He's, half face, machine. He's more machine face. now than man. I, 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 I the the Darth Vader. He ends up becoming a kind of hero towards the end. Yes, he does. At the end of the day, no, he's, he's the like, ultimate he's hero. It's the like, full thank like you. A, He's not a mega true. Are you villain. trying to oh, say that I just answered my own questions? No, <laughs> did, I, did I just answer my but own questions? I'm not a Star Wars person. And um, showed up on Andor as a ghost. Come on. I got $12,000 going right now. Anybody? I got, <laughs> can I get <laughs> like the home shopping? Grand, 13 grand. Can I get 13? Does it come with Piggy Smalls? Oh, no. Ooh. He's not for sale. Oh, well, then Darker, okay. there's no difference between Vader and Darth Vader. That's funny. This was um, fun. Uh, um, what do we? Yeah, do we have like polls? Is this, like, is this like Super Tuesday or what? Yeah, is this uh, like Super we Tuesday? Have one minute and twenty seconds remaining. One so minute and twenty-two seconds now. remain. So we only have a little bit remaining. We have everything pulled like up. Nick is gonna be sending me the numbers here in a bit. So go make sure it's known. We're gonna find out who's gonna walk away a winner and a loser. And uh, let's see if uh, Hannah is actually a good manager. We'll find out. I am. And don't worry if you don't have the Twitter. I've made a fake Twitter for you and voted for Kaiser on your behalf. Oh, Thanks. I knew it. You're, push you're punching the numbers here. So take one t vote away. Now it's you're all burner it. accounts. Um, I well, something I do want to ask specifically. Um, but I would say we're going to be wrapping things up here very soon. Um, you know, we actually got 40 seconds remaining. But for future reference... Rachel, my darling, it's your birthday tomorrow. What are Happy you going to do? I will actually be on tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Uh, PST interviewing, um, sorry, Alex, uh, interviewing Ben Bateman. Uh, oh, no. ben Bateman. 
the trader. We're gonna be talking so, no big deal. My second guest on Movies, Music, okay. and Mayhem. And uh, we're going to be talking about music and his move to LA and wanting to work in the music industry um, and about like our favorite soundtracks and just get him to play some stuff. tunes too. Get that guitar. Pro yeah. Probably, he'll probably sing. Uh, nice. uh, probably go a little weak in the knees because he does have a beautiful voice. Um, but yeah, tune in. Uh, follow my. Uh, uh, oh. What was I saying? What was that alarm? Oh. Oh uh, yeah, sorry. yeah, it was an alarm. However, Jake. Happy birthday, Bye. dear Bye. Rachel. Dose. Happy oh, birthday to oh, you. Oh, oh, sing it together officially. Happy birthday. No one else is going to sing it with me? Happy birthday to you. Dear Switch of Blade. Man, I didn't sign up for this part of it, man. This summer, coming this summer, the Switchblade. The Switchblade takes on the dungeon. Not like everybody who's got talent, which no one does. Hey, our sequel is the Dungeon Two Electric Boogaloo Two, and it'll be it'll be against the Switchblade. The Switchblade's getting a team of her own. So happy birthday, Ray! Happy birthday, Ray! We love you. It's your birthday in six minutes in the East Coast. That's true, and it's your birthday somewhere else already. I already got a, I already got a birthday wish from uh, Malcolm from uh, uh, New Zealand, right? Nice, way to go, yeah. Malcolm. So, hey, real yeah, quick, you guys I'm, know I'm, that Friday, thirty p.m. Please don't make me twenty or <laughs> twenty. Yeah, I haven't been in that decade. Um, come wish me a happy birthday tomorrow. And guys, yeah. pay no attention if you hear the alarm going off. Zipper must have gotten out of the trunk. Damn it, Hitman! You had one job. You have to cut the release. Man, yeah, I love him. <laughs> I, I love. I, say, I love the result. Can I just off. say something before the results? I see a lot of friends. Guy in the dungeon, yeah. hands down. I see a lot of friends in the chat, and it's good to see everybody's faces. I hope you're all staying safe, and uh, it's good to, to be on the show. And Alex, thanks for inviting us. Uh, I had fun, you know, running drills with Kaiser, and good seeing Hitman and Rachel, and obviously the the friendly faces in the chat. I hope this brought a little joy. To you because we're heroes and we're here to save the world. <laughs> we're I'm here. Fire no fire truck. <laughs> All yeah, right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's. I am so glad you guys are here. I really am. I mean, for future reference, so you guys are both like doing a lot of different things. I know. Well, just starting with you. Um, oh, starting with you, Rachel. I know it's your birthday tomorrow, but you also have like someone pretty awesome coming up here in a bit. So tell me about what's going on with uh, Bateman here pretty soon. Oh, so Bateman's going to be on my show, uh, Movies, Music, and Mayhem tomorrow. Uh, we're just going to talk about music and, charge and stuff like that. Uh, and then next week, uh, I don't know who's on. I've got like three people juggling, so we'll find out hopefully tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Who's confirmed? Join me at 7 p.m. on my YouTube channel. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Get me up to 100. Let's do that for my birthday. How about that? Um, and then, uh, I'm appearing on a bunch of other shows, uh, so keep your eyes on my Facebook page and my Twitter, and I will be updating everybody as soon as I can. Absolutely, and it's a hoot and a half. I love every time I go on that page. There's a lot of stuff, cool stuff going in there. And uh, I mean, Brennan, do would you like to drop any cool little funsy little tips and tricks for us? I mean, uh, sure. I mean, you could you could always find me on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon Hanna zero seven. And if you're a fan of Zoe's extraordinary playlist, I do host an after show for that every Sunday at 10 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, these next two weeks coming up, I'm not going to say who because I don't want to jinx it, but we've got some exciting interviews coming up. If you're a fan of the show, if you're a fan of musicals in general, be sure to check it out over at After Buzz TV. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't wait. I actually just started watching the show uh, earlier this week, and I am hooked. I love it. I so can't good. Lie. Yeah, so I love it. Not going to lie. All right, so over wait, to you. Are you Team Max or Simon? So far, Simon. Okay. We'll see. we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I mean, like, I haven't seen anything about it, honestly. I just, like, casually just, like, I was like, oh, cool. People burst into song. Not news, but I'm into that. <laughs> I know nothing about it. So, kind of curious to see how it kind of works out. Um, okay. Over to you, Kevin. Where can we find you and everything you're well, doing and all that thankful, kind of stuff? Thankfully, my dance card just got light. I've been in a bunch of ex exhibition matches the last week. So, 
those are done. Uh, I'm not like Kaiser, who's like Kevin Hart pr promoting Jumanji 2. He's on like every show this week. But uh, I'm really looking forward to not having this hoodie on anymore because it's really hot. I'm looking forward to defending the title against Chander. I can't wait for that to happen. So uh, I'm looking forward to you guys seeing these exhibition matches too. They The, the ones that I've been involved with so far have all been uh, fantastic. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to just watching this show continuing as a fan and also watching Kaiser on his next 17 appearances. Uh, are you on the t t Tonight Show tonight or what? What's going on? I'm doing uh, Brienne's show Friday, SD Best Friends. Is that what it's called? Yes, it is. 8 o'clock, 8.30. And that's I'll his manager. Up. No, it's 8.30. That's no, we'll what, do it at 8.30. Uh, it's it's going to be me, Ellis, and Miss Movies. It's going to be phenomenal. Me and yeah. Miss Movies did a 30-day music challenge where every day we sent each other a song per a theme of the day. Mm, really cool. Because cool. yeah, well, Brianne's a huge music fan. I'm a big music nut. So it was a really fun, cool thing that we could do. I'm like, shit, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. But, dude, you hit it like day seven, and then you just can't wait for the next day. And mm -hmm. especially doing that with someone who's a good pal, you know. So we're going to talk about the whole playlist, and we're going to have uh, Ellis there, you know, drinking Bud Light and hamming along with us. So. No other way to do it. Absolutely. Seventeenth. Don't forget what goes public on Friday is uh, the world's going to see what both Kaiser and I have already seen for ages, and that's that's the Spider Robert Parker, who's going to be representing the dungeon right here and showing you guys that this belt's not going to leave the division. It's not going to leave the dungeon. No, that's that's the new family member. That's the new that's the new uh, the new assassin to the to the squad. Mm -hmm. We'll say uh, Robert Parker. He also he uh, went into he went to go uh, go to bed at this oh, point already. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, he does need to go to sleep. Hijack and his and his away. This belt is heavy. I love this belt, but I, got, I, th I thought we were wrapping up, but I forgot. We don't even know the results yet, do we? Well, I was actually about to say we uh, got the numbers in. We got the numbers in for all three questions. So. For question number one, what is the best slogan slash catchphrase used by a Schmodown personality? The winner with 67.2% of the votes Ooh. is Kevin Smets. Say what? I was robbed. All right. Okay. So that's for question number one. For question number two, which is. Alec beer. You should be proud that you got over 30% of people to think that that was, <laughs> was a catchphrase. Robbed. I'm impressed. What what category slash slice should be added to the inner geekdom league? With the winner with fifty four point five percent of the vote, Kaiser. it is Kaiser with. Ooh, we well one one. Right. looks like I better watch Frankenstein tonight, huh, Kaiser? <laughs> and for our third and final question, Hollywood wants to make a movie about the dungeon faction. What? Sorry, would the dungeon be villains or heroes in this movie? With 58% of the votes what? versus 42%, the winner is oh. Smets. Oh. Kevin Come, on. Come on. You want us as heroes. We're heroes. You're a, you're a part of it. You just don't realize it. You, stole, you tore my heart out, Smets. I trained you to be a bad guy. How dare Listen, you? You, could, you could trade Bring me as much as you can. Dungeon. There's good in you. As Padme said, there is good in him. As what? Luke said, there is good in you. You just don't know it, pal. It's going to take you throwing the Emperor down a shaft let's to temporarily kill him for two let's, movies. Let's be real. Thank God you got a little bad in you. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> hey, I just said, our movie, hey, we're not Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, but we're going to save the world. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Well, there's uh, definitely a lot of uh, love for the Smasher up in here. So congratulations. Well played. How are you feeling walking away up against your manager? Hey, listen, uh, it was fun. And I, I thought he gave me a run for my money when he started uh, doing the quote like about Joker. And he was getting some arguments there. Where I was like, uh oh, I might I, I might lose this. So I was really hoping that movie trailer voice would kind of kind of stick it with the wind. So uh, it was obviously a pleasure to see my friend here, Kaiser and uh, go toe to toe with him. And, uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It's, uh, well, I mean, you guys, I mean, you guys are obviously like, genuinely friends. So this is just like a regular, you know, Wednesday evening, you know, oh, yeah. if, if we weren't having social distancing, we go out and have a beer right now and have laughs about it, about how much fun we had. So 
and probably uh, Alex, feel like you're wrong at the same time. Alex, yeah. you and and Paulie, the kid who inv uh, who invented the microwave pizzas, Denuso, you guys run a class classy operation. You do. Thank really, you. you guys run. You guys always have good shows. Rachel, I love you. Happy birthday, Hitman! You, you're fired. I don't ever <laughs> want to see you again. Smash! Congratulations! Congratulations! Don't sleep with the belt tonight because your face looks like a cheese grater when you wake up. Yeah, I know. I that was a mistake the other day, and that's his that's his mic drop moment. <laughs> Well, all I have to say is, uh, you know, I can't wait to, to see you, um, to kind of see you go up against a new competitor in the future. Is there anyone you would love to see, go up against, potentially? We have yeah. winners in the past, such as uh, RMB. We actually have Brandon Hanna, for example. We have Chandru. Um, we have a whole bunch of people. So is there anyone in particular? Rachel hey. as well. Is there anyone that's kind of uh, standing out to you as a... Who you would love to argue against? I don't want any piece of Rachel. Rachel took down the chairman, so at his own right. game. So, uh, you know, there was that that individual up there that thought he can get the better of me by becoming someone's manager, and he fell flat on his face. So, if Brandon yeah. Hannah is ready, Brandon yeah. Hannah will be the next one to get smashed. Yeah. Ooh, so sounds like a threat could be coming. Okay, so Brandon Hanna against Kevin Smith. Um, Do you how hear many that? Dramatic exits does a guy have to make? In one show. <laughs> it's awkward because you just said bye to everybody and now you're going to have to do it again. I'm saying, listen, pal, I'm 1-0 and in Schmo Bates. You came in here trying to get your act with, with Kaiser and put your money in Kaiser and you fell flat on your face. But you did it hiding behind Kaiser's back. Now it's time for you to face me and get smashed in Schmo Bates because, like it or not, the same thing that would happen to you in IG is going to happen to you in the Schmo Bates. You're going down, pal. I can't be on that show, guys. <laughs> That's fair. You very think, fair. Any word, Brendan? You think you could beat me, Kevin? You're lucky we've never played in IG. Huh? Lucky. You want this, don't you? You want this. You want this. You <laughs> want to be fair, this. it is the prettiest design belt that we have. So, yeah. It is, it's the best looking belt, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Anna, you're going down, pal. You try to go this little weaselly way with Kaiser and trying to surprise me, and you couldn't even protect Kaiser from himself. That he didn't—he didn't even answer the correct question the first time. So you better bring your A game when it comes to me, pal, because sooner or later the Smasher has you in his sights. And whether it's in IG or whether it's in Schmo Bates, the fact is you're gonna get smashed. Ah! Hold on, I should well, do that with it. There we go. <laughs> it doesn't make sense when I have my hoodie down. That now, now you're gonna get smashed now, guy. Listen, I wasn't trying to go behind anyone's back and be sneaky. Kaiser paid me a lot of money. That came out of the dungeon bank account, by the way. So yeah, I know the card bounced at Chipotle today. I was really pissed. Yeah, that's why. So I happily take your money, Kevin, and I will happily take my another victory in Schmobates over you, just like I did to Frank. You know, you've chosen the way of pain. It's be even easier to beat you. Can't wait. Can't wait. Well, messages are coming your way, guys. Thank you guys so much um, for coming on today. And Kaiser, I know he he like moonwalked out of here at some point. I'm not entirely sure, but that's okay. <laughs> Rachel, Brennan, the hot man, Kevin. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys so much for coming on uh, this week's episode of Schmobates, where we argue to the death, to the blood of Schmodown's biggest fucking question. Every single Wednesday at 9.30 Central, 7.30 Pacific. So definitely come and hang out next week. We hope you make it a, a, a pretty regular thing. We're also available in audio form everywhere podcasts are found. And you can find me on Twitter at real under, under thingy. What's the thing? That line at the bottom. I don't know what it's called. Underscore. Can underscore. That's the word. Brandon make another awkward exit again. All right, guys. I'm really One sorry. <laughs> Real underscore Alex oh, Mack. And uh, definitely oh, like and subscribe and comment. And we want to hear your opinions. Thank you so much. Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. <laughs>